Good morning. Welcome to Old St. Mary's Church. As we gather to celebrate the Eucharist on this, the first Sunday of Lent. Please take a moment to silence all electronic devices. All of the readings for this Mass can be found on page 1116 in your hymnal. And the music and readings can be found in this week's worship aid. Feel free to follow along on your phone or device if you'd like on the OSM Parish app or click the Sunday worship aid link on the front page of our parish website, oldsaintmarys.com. Presiding at this liturgy is Father Schoberly. And preaching is Father Wilson Smith. Please stand and join in singing our gathering song, number 562, From Ashes to the Living Font, number 562. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As is also appropriate on this first Sunday of Lent, 
As you know, we have catechumens and candidates, and in particular, we're focusing on catechumens today. We are going to have what's called the rite of sending. We are sending them to the cathedral, where this afternoon they will be raised to the status of elect. That is, those people preparing for the Easter sacraments. So we will do that uh, after the homily today and send them with great joy. As we prepare to get to that, let us also acknowledge our sin and our need for God's mercy as we pursue these days of Lent. Lord Jesus, well of salvation, quenching fountain and life-giving stream. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, light in our darkness, sight for the blind and power of God. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, hope in our doubt, consolation in our grief, resurrection and life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant through the yearly observances of Holy Lent that we may grow an understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The first reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God formed man out of the clay of the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And so man became a living being. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east and placed there the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made various trees grow that were delighted to look at and good for food. With the tree of life in the middle of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees in the garden? The woman answered the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, You shall not eat it or even touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well that the moment you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like the gods, 
you who know that what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes, and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, through one man, sin entered the world, and through sin, death. And thus death came to all men 
in as such as all sinned. For if, by the transgression of the one, death came to reign through that one, how much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of justification come to reign in life through the one Jesus Christ? In conclusion, just as through one transgression, condemnation came upon all, so through one righteous act, acquittal and life came to all. For just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinners, and so through the obedience of the one, the many will be made righteous. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was hungry. The tempter approached and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become loaves of bread. He said in reply, It is written, One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, Again it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Then the devil took him up to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their magnificence. And he said to him, All these I shall give to you, if you will prostrate yourself and worship me. At this Jesus said to him, Get away, Satan. It is written, The Lord your God shall you worship, and him alone shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Uh, this does not pertain to the Gospel. Uh, there is a car... Uh, that is blocking someone in. Uh, it's a Nissan Rogue, license plate AL78528. It's AL78528, Nissan Rogue, blocking someone in. If that's yours, if you could just uh, uh, check that out there. Thank you. I think that's all the notes for this moment. Um, in my first year of priesthood, I was, I was a campus minister eh, at uh, the Ohio State University in Columbus. And, you know, in the first year, there's a lot you have to figure out about priesthood, especially like, what are my limitations? What can I do? And what, what can I do? And people would ask, you know, something simple like, hey, I've got 
a long shift tonight. Can I, I can't make the confession time. Could we meet at 8 p.m. or something? I'd be like, yeah, absolutely. I'm like, hey, I'm having a family reunion out at this place. Could you come say Mass for us? Okay, yeah, I think I could do that. Um, hey, could you baptize my goldfish? You know, come this other question. And you just sort of say, you know, I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know if I can do that. You know, uh, make a few gallons of holy water or something for the fish to swim in. It doesn't. I don't know if that's, you know, should be done. Uh, so you know, there's there's questions, and and one of the more remarkable ones, um, and I have permission to share this story, uh, FYI, uh, was I got this note. <clears throat> it was mailed to me. Um, and it was, first of all, it was handwritten, which is rare these days, and it was handwritten in pencil, you know. So I was like, all right, well, that's a little, a little strange. And then I saw the word seance in it, you know. I'm like, okay. And it turned out to be from these three sisters who had conducted a seance in their home uh, trying to commune with their relatives. First and foremost, just in terms of the teaching of the church, no. Um... <laughs> Let's try not to do that, please and thank you. Uh, intercessory prayer is okay. You know, we pray to the saints and our loved ones to intercede for us. That's cool. Don't do the seance. They'd done a seance, and uh, they lived out in this town, this rural town out in Ohio. And um, ever since they did it, <laughs> they, they were like, oh, we've got doors that are opening and closing on their own. It sounds like there's like footsteps upstairs, but nobody's up there. The fireplace keeps billowing on its own. Um, there's just strange stra- sounds and growls and all this stuff. And there's a number to contact the person. And so I, call, I called her and she was like, oh, Father, I'm so glad you got the note. Um, you know, can you come out and, and just look into that for us? And, and I said, yeah, yeah, uh, I ain't doing that. <laughs> you know but I appreciate your trust, you know, in in asking. No, I I ultimately said, you know what, I'll do it, because I guess it occurred to me that this was a very, like a very rational person who could tell that people she was telling this to thought she was kind of, you know, a little off, you know, and um, so I understood that. So anyway, we ended up arranging this meeting. Um, This is more detail than you may need, I don't know. We ended up meeting at the, the um, Newark, Ohio, Golden Corral. Um, the Golden Corral, if you don't know, is this uh, delightful wonderland of uh, all-you-can-eat buffet foods. And it was just one of the more surreal moments of my life to sort of be sitting there talking about this haunted house, and I'm just throwing down pudding pie, um, which, again, you can have as much of that as you want, and, you know... You can dip the marshmallows and chocolate and all that. And uh, we're talking about this. Anyway, what ended up happening, we went to the house and I did the prayers. And, you know, first of all, I'll say the prayers of the church, incidentally, like, you know, they work. We're basically saying what Jesus says in the gospel today. You know, whatever's here, get away. Get away, Satan. Back off. Not in this house. What I'd also ask the sisters to do is to like for that prayer to bring over some some loved ones and some friends and just try to get that sense of like belonging and comfort around you. So that's the kind of notion that I especially want to get at and return to today, you know, as we're talking about evil, because unfortunately we are talking about uh, evil and Satan and uh, uh, these types of uh, light um, topics this Sunday morning, you know. Um, because there is, you know, there's, there's this, what, we, what the church sometimes calls primary evil, and it's, uh, unfortunately, we can't, it's just part of our faith that, that Satan tries to do things to mess us up in our lives. But what the catechism says, and believe it or not, I put, I slide in some catechism in homilies, and I'm, I don't always say it, but just to know you're getting it. You know, if somebody asks what's going on at Old St. Mary's, mostly catechism. Okay, mostly catechism. The catechism says, you know, Satan, the thing with him is that he's, he was an angel. He's a fallen angel. He's pure spirit. And he has some power and some influence that God allows in his providence. But at the end of the day, he is just a creature. Like, he, there's only so much that he can do to you. 
you know, so if, if he was really responsible for the doors closing and the running up the stairs and all that stuff, that's just mind tricks, you know, and that's, that's like all he can do, right? So there's this like, you know, instead of primary evil, I sometimes call it horror movie evil, you know, this sense, because like in horror movies, whenever there's a possession, you know, they, they, they'll call uh, the reverend and, and the pastor will come over and they'll be like, this is too serious, we need to call a Catholic priest. And then the priest comes over and handles it, whatever. There's, there's, there's that kind of evil. But then there's this like more common one that I think is like, to me, even scarier. There are kinds of evil that are even scarier. And of course, there's myriad of those, all kinds of social ills and things that are contrary to the will of God, God's nature and everything that God is about. The one I want to get at today, because it's where Jesus is, is Satan is speaking to Jesus in the context of a desert, right? Speaking to him in a desert. So like, there's just nothing around. Jesus is in complete isolation, and he's vulnerable because he's in a position where he's obviously hungry, not having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. The temptation of having stones turned into bread so he could eat the bread. Uh, not having any connection with anyone and feeling, you know, that he's entirely having to be relying on his faith and his heavenly father, uh, you know, some of these things could be enticing to those of us living in that kind of desert context. Now, I'm not going to go out full on and say, okay, deserts are evil or something like that. That's not what I'm getting at. What I will say is that I think many of us are living in deserts, so to speak, And it is a place where Satan's voice speaks to us in a not-so-good way, right? In a way that is not God's voice. And I think there's like this invitation for us at Lent to look around at our lives and look at each other and like as Christians just try to see the deserts that people are living in. Now, some of them may be primarily material, right? People who are struggling deeply to try to get access to food and clothing and shelter, but they're in deserts where that's not available to them or where they're unseen by people and so feel themselves to be in a desert, right? Because that's an isolating experience to sort of be in that place and watch everyone else go about live their lives, you know, out running errands, knowing that they're going to go home and prepare a meal. Like, that's a, a desert experience, right? But even before you get to that problem of material need, right, this is the thing I think that even if we can't help with that, what everyone is looking for is to connect with someone and to be seen by someone. Because when you're, you're in a desert of, um, of feeling like no one sees your problems and no one sees this burden you're carrying, that's a very deserted, alone, isolated place where the devil is whispering in your ear, hey, you're a burden, right? Or hey, you, you're too expensive to keep alive. Or um, that person has too much going on in their life. They, they don't want to help you or they can't help you. Um, or hey, you know, everybody else is getting through alone. Why can't you? What's wrong with you, right? And what I want to be clear on is that's the voice of the devil in the desert, right? In that little desert that we're living in. And many of us are essentially living in deserts of empathy (laughs) where we are hungry for someone to see, to hear, to acknowledge the thing that we're going through and simply to first just be able to say, oh my gosh, that is really hard. I'm so glad you told me and trusted me with that. Because what's more likely in our culture is that we'll say something we've gone through, something we've lost, someone we've lost, uh, a a, a tremendous burden, and someone responds with a joke or silence or they change the subject or what have you. That all the more puts a person back shrinking into that lonely desert of feeling like no one sees me and connects with me. So what we want to be clear on is that that is not of God right? That's the voice of the devil in a person saying you don't matter. And it's just not true. So I think that's, you know, I think that's part of our invitation this week and something to ponder throughout this Lent, to look at our lives 
and to look at our, the people around us and acknowledge the deserts they're living in. You know, you think of unique situations where someone is, has lost someone and they're in grief. Everybody's around for a week or so, but what about six months or a year later? Are they still in pain? Can they still need someone to help them and be with them? Um, I, think that's, I think that's the invitation, to, to make sure Satan's voice is drowned out and that through one another, through our words of empathy, compassion, and love, uh, they can hear God's voice uh, instead, right? Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, I don't have anything else to say about it, so... All right. Members of Old St. Mary's, with the beginning of Lent, we are in a new spiritual space. Lent is about putting Christ first, and those who lead us to remember how to do that are catechumens and candidates. Lent is especially intended to be a 40-day retreat for catechumens, purifying their, their and our intentions and giving us all enlightenment. Today we celebrate the right of sending catechumens to the bishop to become elect and eligible for baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist at the next Easter vigil. Father Brad, I want to present our catechumens, Kaylee Easley, Gibson Hetzel, Alexander Ingram, Khalil Williamson, Jose Villages, who are, becoming, who are beginning their final period of preparation and purification, leading to initiation. They've found strength in God and grace and support in our community, in our community's prayers and example. They are asking to be recognized for their progress in the faith and the assurance of our blessing and prayers as, he goes, as they go forth to the rite of election at the cathedral this afternoon. Catechumens, please come forward along with your sponsors. You have all been preparing for the initiation sacraments with great hope. Before you come before the bishop and be chosen in Christ for the Easter sacraments, it is the responsibility of this community to inquire about your readiness. Who gives testimony about their readiness? I will. Each of the catechumens before us have faithfully attended worship, have participated in the liturgy of the word, the breaking open of scripture, have asked good questions, and that have drawn all of us, including the sponsors, into greater appreciation for who Jesus is, and they continue to grow in their faith. Thank you. Thank you. I wish to draw a distinction between the catechumens and the candidates. So all the catechumens, please raise your hand. There we go. And our candidates, just so you can all see them as well. My dear catechumens, this afternoon, what we are sending you to is to uh, be raised to the status of elect 
by Bishop Lombardo, who will be representing Archbishop Supich this afternoon. If you are ready to make that stand, I invite you to come forward and now sign this book of elect, which we presented this afternoon, and to sign your name. Members of Old St. Mary's community, do you accept the testimony that you have heard and do you give your promise of prayer and support for our catechumens to be elect? <laughs> Kaylee and Gibson, Alexander, Khalil, Jose, this community gladly recommends you to Bishop Lombardo who will preside this afternoon, who in the name of Christ will call you to the Easter sacraments. May God bring to completion the good work begun in you. Ladies and gentlemen, our catechumens to become elect. I'm going to now invite you to come down in front of the altar and invite the candidates to come up along with them. And let us all stand. My brothers and sisters, we look forward to celebrating at Easter the life-giving mysteries of our Lord's suffering, death, and resurrection. As we journey together to the Easter sacraments, our catechumens will look to us for an example of Christian renewal. Let us pray to the Lord for them and for all the elect, for all of our candidates, as well as for ourselves, that we may be renewed by one another's efforts and together come to share the joys of Easter. For all catechumens and candidates, that they may be freed from selfishness and learn to put others first. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that their godparents and sponsors may be living examples of the gospel. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that their catechists may always convey to them the beauty of God's word. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that all candidates and catechumens may share with others the joy they have, they have found in their friendship with Jesus. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that our community may grow in charity and be constant in prayer. During this Lenten season, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also remember all the sick of this parish and all members of our families, friends, and relatives who are hurting in any way, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And that all those who have died, especially Sean O'Reilly, and those who mourn them will know eternal life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We also pause a moment to consider prayers that are deep within our hearts 
and to consider the prayers of those who join with us online or those who are not able to be with us this morning. For all of those prayers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Father of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide our catechumens into the days and weeks ahead. Strengthen them in their vocation. Build them into the kingdom of your Son and seal them with the spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear candidates, I've asked you to join with our catechumens, knowing that next week is a special journey for you. Next week, you will celebrate a penitential rite, especially acknowledging your progress in faith, and we continue with you on the journey of Lent. So you are all setting out on the road that leads to the glory of Easter. Christ will be your way, your truth, and your life. Reflect on that journey as we send you forth today to reflect on God's word and to pray over the scriptures, especially considering how the good news of Christ touches you and how Christ overcomes evil. And in a special way, my dear catechumens, we send you to celebrate with our bishop your election for the Easter sacraments. Go with our prayers and blessings Walk always in Christ's peace. Go in peace, in peace the peace of Christ, and learn the ways of God. Go in peace the peace of Christ, and learn the ways of as always, thank you for your contributions to the parish. Uh, this morning we have a special second collection, so the second time the gifts, uh, the baskets are passed. The gifts will be for the church in Latin America. You may have envelope for that. We invite you to contribute to that as well. The first time is for the parish. Thank you for your consideration and your generosity. not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that comes forth, that comes forth from the mouth of
Sisters, brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, give us the right dispositions to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Almighty Father, we bless you through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, 
you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, celebrating the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son Who left us this pledge of his love we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people, and may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, with St. Joseph, and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. In the words Jesus taught us, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. That peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to each other some sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter under my roof. Our communion hymn is number 1050, Broken for the Broken, number 1050.
Let us pray. Renewed now with heavenly bread by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. 
Thank you once again for joining us in prayer and worship, especially during this season of Lent. Let us continue to pray for each other and those who join us online every day. Uh, Stations of the Cross are prayed here at Old St. Mary's every Friday at 6 o'clock. We hope you can join us. Uh, There are copies of the reflection book, Not by Bread Alone, available in baskets at the two tables in the commons. Feel free to take one. Uh, Does our parish help you grow spiritually? How good are we at connecting you to others in the parish? In what ways do you feel invited to share your talents in our parish or any parish? Know that right now we are involved in the Disciple Maker Index Survey in the parish. Those of you here on Ash Wednesday heard me promote this. I will continue to urge you. We only have until March 31st to give in all our information. Uh, So it's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes if you do the digital one. If I need to get my phone out, um, there is a link on the parish website as well as the parish app. There is also... Uh, In the commons on your way out, you'll see a QR code on the posters. Those all work. If you catch me after Mass, I can show you the QR code, and you are welcome to uh, use that link. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes. You don't have to do it continuously. You know, you can do it on a couple rides on the the bus or on the L uh, or you know, in the doctor's office, whatever you're waiting for. It's really important because the information you give will help us know how to go forward as parish in the future. And this is being done in every parish throughout the archdiocese. So if you're visiting with us and from another parish, you can do it for us and for them too. School parent, if you're related to us, if you're connected in any way, I invite you to do that, and it's really important. As of this morning, this is good. We're up to 20% participation. So, yeah, we'd like to get much more of that. So if you have any issues with that, let me or or email steve at oldstmaries.com. Steve D'Souza is working with us on coordinating that. And if you can't get into technology, we do have some paper versions that you just fill out and return back to us. And then it's sent into the Archdiocese and they enter it in for you. So just know all that. Uh, You'll find it at oldstmaries.com. And as I said, it's until the 31st. Do we have any visitors or newcomers with us today? I'm going to ask you to stand up. There's a bonus for that. So welcome. Welcome. And I always say you get to be first in line for the refreshments after Mass. So that gives you a chance to talk longer with us and us to talk longer to you. So thanks for being with us. Thank you. Um, Now I'm going to invite those people who have the CRS rice bowl, rice bowls, (laughs) to come forward. We are, as you know, participating in the CRS Rice Bowl Catholic Relief Services Lenten program. And after Mass, you're invited to grab one of these rice bowls and to uh, put it out, and your almsgiving will help Catholic Relief Services provide life-saving assistance in nearly 100 countries, including those affected by the recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria, And after Mass, you're invited to take a rice bowl and to use the easy and fun resource to deepen out your Lenten experience. There's a little booklet in each one that gives you different things to reflect on every day of Lent, so you can do that too. Almsgiving will help Catholic Relief Services provide life-saving assistance in nearly 100 countries. So please return the rice bowl the Sunday after Easter with the coins converted to cash. Our bank doesn't do coins these days, so it would be very helpful for us to to just have that translated to cash or check. So please stand and join with me as we ask a special blessing on these rice bowls. Gracious God, as we begin our Lenten journey, fill us with your spirit of renewal, humility, and grace. Help us this Lent to let go of those things that weigh us down. May our prayers and gifts bring us closer to your son, Jesus, and bring life to our sisters and brothers who struggle with hunger and poverty. 
Each day, may we proclaim the dignity of life and celebrate the witness of your love. Bless these rice bowls as concrete symbols of our solidarity with all your children, our brothers and sisters around the world. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go now and live the life of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is number 566. Again, we keep this solemn fast. Number 566.
Thank you. 